Today we're going to talk about the practices of contemplation. This is important whether you're an advanced Kriya practitioner uh, or whether you are just practicing alternate nostril breathing in the Sushumna breath for the first six months to a year where you're preparing yourself for higher practices. And why is this so important? Because it's good to read books, it's good to listen to lectures, um, it's good to go to seminars to get ideas, to inspire ourselves, but none of that really matters unless we understand what it is we're hearing or what it is we're reading. Uh, we have to have a direct experience of the knowledge for ourselves. And this is where a lot of people make mistakes because they just automatically trust someone who says, um, oh, I've read a book or I've written a book. Um, I, I'm here to teach you these wonderful things. You know, when we hear someone say that, for some odd reason, most people are like, sure, you must know what you're talking about. Um, and that's not always the case. So we have to learn to develop that discernment for ourselves, our inner knowing. That way we can understand what we're reading, whether it's true or not. If it is, great. That'll help to lead us into greater understanding of who we are as spiritual beings, who we are in this infinite consciousness. We also need to trust that when we read something and it seems like BS, uh, not true at all, we need to trust that, you know, just because someone wrote a book doesn't mean they know anything. They wrote a book. That's what they did. We need to let go of that until we find that inner direct knowing. So what do we do? Well, once we're calm and clear through these practices, then we pick up a book, such as the Yoga Sutras, and we read a line. So in chapter 2 of the Yoga Sutras, which is actually the chapter entitled Kriya Yoga, it reads, Kriya Yoga is intensity in spiritual practice, learning and application of one's own self-study, and the perfect alignment of attention with Ishvara, or the Lord of the Universe. That's some pretty heavy stuff. There's a lot in that one particular sutra, and there's, I believe, 196 of these sutras. So after we've practiced, we read that to ourselves. Kriya Yoga is intensity and spiritual practice. Okay, that makes sense. Learning and application of one's own self-study. Well, that can be kind of confusing. What does that mean, learning and application of one's own self-study? So we stop, we reflect. What can that mean? And eventually we'll start to get an inner realization of what that means for us in our own path. And to go on, and the perfect alignment of attention with Ishvara, or the Lord of the Universe. Well, what is the Lord of the Universe? What is Ishvara? Now, if you've got a good book, there'll be a commentary on it, which will give you some ideas, but then you need to contemplate yourself. What does it mean to have our attention perfectly aligned with Ishvara, or the Lord of the Universe? And you're not mentally processing it. You're not analyzing it. You're looking at it. You're letting it sit within your consciousness. Because remember, there's you, there's the mind, there's the consciousness of the personality and the body, but there's also the rest of you, which is the rest of the universe, which is very intelligent. If you just consider all the processes that go on to keep this body functioning that you have no idea about, to make it happen in seven to eight billion people on the planet, all the creatures make the universe spin as it does, there's something else going on there. And so if we are able to acknowledge that that is a part of us as well, that this knowledge is within us, we can hold that question, what does this mean? And we can wait for the answer. And it will come as an aha moment. It won't come as a paragraph, well, it might come as a paragraph, but it won't come uh, usually as words. It will come as a deep understanding. And this is why it's so hard for people to communicate spiritual truths and principles, because it comes as just a knowing. Just like I know my hair is brown, or you know you're a man or a woman. You just know it. You don't need to talk about it. You don't need to explain it. It's just there. And this is another reason why we need to keep our practices private and to ourselves, unless we have a mentor that we trust and that leads us well. Um, because the more you talk about it, the, the more confused you get by it. So it's about, you want to look at words to get an understanding of the truth, and then feel it, know it, accept it, move on, contemplate the next sutra, contemplate the next thing you want to know. Or if you don't get it all this time, continue to contemplate it. You can spend a lifetime contemplating, what am I? What is this self? What is God? Because it will always lead you deeper. It will always lead you to another, under, another level of understanding. And this is, what makes, this is what makes us happy. This is where the bliss comes from, because we're starting to know and see ourselves for what we really are. And we start to see what is true and what is real. 
and we're not we're not caught up in thinking and doubting in the mind anymore we're beyond that we still use the mind we can still do our taxes we can still have an intelligent conversation we can still hang out with all of our friends who aren't interested in spirituality because they're god too and they're doing their own thing we do our thing um, but we're happy because we know what we are uh, we know where to find peace we know that we can get answers from within so with contemplation again just to reiterate you meditate until you're calm clear and serene once you're in that state as good as you can get what is it you really want to know what is god what am i seriously ask the question like you really want to know it ask it with intensity while you wait for that answer to manifest from within might take two days might take five minutes might take three years but the, the point is, is if you really want to know something you just have to keep asking and waiting until it arises and sometimes it won't occur in meditation sometimes you'll be reading uh, the yoga sutras or you'll be reading the gita and you'll be wondering about something and you still don't get the answer but then three days later it occurs it's an aha moment it just pops into your awareness you know what it is so then we start to see that our meditation practice and our contemplation goes above and beyond just sitting there quietly once you ask the question you've put out there what what you want to know and the universe the rest of you will take that time to answer that it might not happen immediately a couple days from now a year from now but the point is if you ask you have to ask and you have to be sincere and then receptive and wait and this is the process and eventually there'll come a time when there are no more questions you don't need to know what God is you don't need to know what you are you don't need to know anything really because you've already explored it and then you just sit in the silence and are completely and totally at peace with that and you need nothing else you're no longer expecting God to come to you in a blazing ball of light you're no longer expecting to be peaceful all the time you realize that everything that happens within your mind within your dreams within your consciousness within the world around you within the people that's all God happening and it's nice it's kind of a silly word. I don't like that word, nice. Because um, when you look it up in the dictionary, it doesn't mean what you usually think it does. Let's say uh, it's tranquil and it's powerful and profound. And then you are self abiding. You don't need anything, just yourself, which is everything. But the point is that you are self abiding. And all of these teachings point to abiding within the self as the self, which you can't avoid. You're always the self. But the practice helps you remember it, helps you realize it, helps it become very real and concrete for you. So it's no longer a mental concept, it's reality. So that's what we're aiming for with contemplation. How can I abide within and as the self? And then wait, see what happens. Trust the process. Do it every day, multiple times a day. See life as the whole process happening. And this is how you can approach contemplation. And then you'll enjoy all your spiritual books. <clears throat> you'll enjoy all your lectures, because you'll know it for yourself. Excuse me. <clears throat> 